Welcome to Celebrating Act Two. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome back. We have the pleasure this week of uh, having one of our favorite guests, Bill Jordan of Embrace the Boom. John? Hey, Bill. <laughs> I'm How are you? <laughs> Good. I've got a question for you guys. Do you know what time it is? What time is it? Oh, I don't wear a watch. Time of the year. It's that time of the year when I have to finally admit I am never going to make my resolutions, my New Year's <laughs> resolutions. That's it. I, it's been so many months now, I just got to give up. Why am I making New Year's resolutions anyway, really? I haven't you... lost weight, which is always my resolution. I've never lost weight in January, February, or March, ever, even though I make the same resolution all the time. So, so you're one of those guys who have resolved to lose 10 pounds this year, only 15 to go. <laughs> that's, you got me down, Pat. That's, and, that's, that's and that's in November. <laughs> yeah, or December. Yeah, start early right. to make your resolution so that you, when you don't f accomplish it, you don't feel quite as bad because you had more time to do it. Well, we all have the best of intentions, don't we? I mean, some people don't even go anywhere near anything like a resolution. Um, I don't make, quote, resolutions, but I definitely reflect on my life at the beginning of the year and when we typically take a beach week in springtime, and uh, then my birthday in July, and then around Christmas. So I probably review my life and get very introspective at least four times a year. That's not to say I'm changing anything necessarily. Um, but I tell you that I was raised Southern Baptist and Southern Baptists don't quote, do Lent, the Lenten season leading up to Easter. Right. But I've adopted the practice the last couple of years and I find Lent, perhaps for me because it is more of a faith-based thing and not just a me thing, uh, I can stick to things better during Lent than I can just in trying to make a New Year's resolution or, you know, I'm going to be 66 this year. Before I'm 66, I'm going to do this. We're just trying to establish new patterns of behavior. For these 40 days of Lent, for whatever reason, it's like making a light switch. Whatever I've decided to add and subtract in my life, I'm pretty much able to do that. Why do you suppose that is, Bill? Why why Lent? Uh, well, because I think I'm making a deal with God and not just with me. Good point. Good point. Yeah. You really do need to be responsible to somebody um, in order to accomplish a goal and not just to yourself. Because right. we're we're mostly capable of fooling ourselves more than anybody else. Well, as Plato said, self-deception is the greatest deception. Yeah, and the easiest one. Absolutely. We rationalize to ourselves all day, every day. I wonder if maybe uh, my re New Year's resolutions aren't really about self-improvement, but about self-humiliation, because I, ne <laughs> I never carry them through. Maybe I just need to put myself in, my, in a place. You well, know? guys, you know, I never made a new year's resolution maybe when i was in my early teens or something like that uh but, but somewhere along the way in my teenage years the few things that i ever really wanted to change major changes um i uh, sort of adopted today is the first day of the rest of my life so it didn't matter when it was um and i remember probably the biggest single thing i ever did a habit that i changed was when I quit smoking for good about 25 or 30 years ago. Huge. And, and, wow. Huge. and I did it on April 1st, about 25 or 30 years ago. And I was a three to four pack a day smoker, but wow. I, I was ready for it then. And so I had quit a number of times before. Maybe I went for three years once and two years once, but I always came back. And then I just woke up one morning and said, you know, I know it's not good for me, even though I love smoking, as most smokers do. And I just woke up, and on April 1st of that year, I stopped smoking, and within two or three days, it was like I had never smoked before in my life. I could even tolerate being around people who did smoke. I couldn't wow. tolerate rental cars that had an ashtray in it all of a sudden. <laughs> uh, right. But so for me, 
that is sort of like the resolution things. But why do you think so many people make January 1st that date? Because that's the perfect time to sign up for a health club and break that resolution and pay for it for two or three years. Uh, so <laughs> or, or sign up for Jenny Craig or learn to love Marie Osmond because she lost 50 pounds or whatever. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, I wonder if the date is has something to do with it. It really is irrelevant to us making changes in our lives. Uh, as you said, Art, it really has to come from within. You have to find that, that you have to be ready. You're re ready to make the change, embrace it, and just go for it. Yeah, I think, um, you know, a lot of changes that we make, um, it's been said before that we either make them for two reasons, either inspiration or desperation. Um, I think it gets back to two of who do you want to be? And I can look at myself and, you know, meditate on it or whatever, give it some thought. Who do I want to be physically, mentally, spiritually, and emotionally? And then you build on these little habits throughout your day and you can't change yourself. And yeah, there's nothing magical about January 1st. My dad used to tell me that. You know, if you want to make a change, make a change. And we have an opportunity throughout every day. We can change at any moment, right? And I didn't join a, uh, I used to be a member of a health club and I'd go there after work, you know, two, three times a, a week. And I'd talk myself out of it more often than not, but I would go. But I've got dumbbells here and a kettlebell and some push up things. And that's on me. And I don't have to set away, uh, set aside, you know, 30 minutes a day to do that. I can go to the bathroom, come back and do 25 push ups. And I can build over the course of a day, I, I can get a pretty good workout in and with minimal amount of time invested. But that is a choice that I can make. I've made a 50 books in uh, 2020 challenge to myself. I love to read, but I never found, I never made the time or prioritized the time to read. And I'm already up to book 11 or 12 now for the new year. And I've got like three more at the library waiting for me. So we can make these choices and then act on them and then you feel better about yourself and then you build on that. Good good points. Uh, and I think that brings us to a semi-conclusion because we're never really done with improving ourselves. Absolutely. I hope not. And I will end on this note. A, philo a famous philosopher, uh, Yoda, once said, <laughs> there is no trying, there is only doing. Correct. So with that... Uh, Bill, let me tell, tell people where we can get a mug. Everybody Again, wants Bill, to Jordan, Bill Jordan, embraceTheBoom.com. If you want to be a part of our uh, Embrace the Boom movement, and then this is, again, just to empower and encourage and inspire members of the baby boomer generation, born and raised to members of our greatest generation. And uh, just a reminder that, you know, our life isn't over, that we can still get better, we can still get stronger and smarter and wiser and and be a mentor to others. There's still good things in our life, and it's not just about running out the clock at this point. So then there's also a 15-part video series that you'll find at that website. Little tidbits, little old philosophy, in fact, that will help you lead a better life. I know it does me. All about making better changes in ourselves. That's good. It. Bill, thank you. We'll thank see you. you soon, I hope. Thank you. See you, Bill. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.